Hello everybody. This week, in this week's Friday Functions video, we're going to talk about tracking the International Space Station. And this is a new series I'm starting called Curious People Want to Know. And most of you who know me, you realize I'm an extremely curious person and I'm always investigating new things. And one thing that I've been following for a while is the International Space Station. And um, in following it, I ran across a lot of neat information like <clears throat> how quickly it's moving, um, where it is moving, how high it, it is above us, um, and the, the a number of times it circles the Earth a day, so approximately 16 times a day. I believe there are eight people above this space station, but I might have that maybe off by one or two because I I hope I have the most recent information. So I believe there's eight people. Sunny was one of my favorite people, but she's back on ground. Um, I followed her for a long time. Anyway, um, one of the cute things I learned on this is that the speed at which they travel, I mean, think about it. They're going around the globe 16 times a day. That's heck of fast. And it's that fast because it's their speed that ensures they follow the curve of the earth as they fall and that they don't uh, lose their weightlessness. And their weightlessness is really important so they don't crash and burn. So anyway, I find it all very interesting and I'm sure that if you just Bing or Google the International Space Station, if you haven't been following it, it's really easy to get up to speed. Um, and uh, also noticed that there are quite a few developers that were putting together solutions for, you know, how could we track the space station? Because it is possible that whenever it's above where you live, you could see it and take a picture of it, which is, uh, is that amazingly cool? So this series is going to be for, for the ISS tracking, there'll be two parts. This first part will give you just the, the flow basis, uh, basics, and the app basics okay so if you just want to know where it is and kind of get a, uh, um, a flow that will go find that out for you and then show in the app some details about it and maybe a map so that you can see you know what is the space shuttle looking down at um, that's what we're gonna do today and then we're gonna follow this up another day probably sometime next week with uh, a part two that will give you uh, notifications on your phone when it is above your head. So you don't miss it and you can go run outside and get that great picture. So that's the goal of this, um, the first two videos of the Curious People Wanna Know series. So let's get started by going to the API. And this is the beauty of the Power Platform. We have uh, approximately 300 out of the box connectors and these connectors that we have um, give you access to most people's stuff, right? So nine times out of 10, the thing you need to connect to is in those connectors. Um, but sometimes you wanna do something that Microsoft hasn't thought about because Microsoft doesn't think of everything. So you're in luck if the something you wanna connect to has a REST API. So a couple of things you can do with that REST API. You can create your own custom connector, which is not as hard as you may think, or you could use an HTTP request and talk to that connector. So um, it, HTTP actions are premium actions, but in my mind, they're worth every dime of whatever they cost because they give you such a broad scope to what you can connect to. Now, just to go over a couple of basics when it comes to your REST API, whatever you want to connect to, you got to go find the documentation because the documentation is going to have what you need as far as what is this thing offering? How do you authenticate to it? How often can you call it? Um, and what are the endpoints and the responses? Those five things are really the most important to know. And so I found a REST API for tracking the uh, International Space Station called where uh, the ISS dot at. Um, and if you go to this site, and I will put the link in the description, and you go all the way down to the bottom to the about, 
you will see that this was made by Bill Slump. And it might be Shump, so I might be pronouncing his name wrong. Um, but he also does a blog. And what he wanted to do was to make it really easy to track the satellite. And he wanted to create a simple API for that. So when we get to part two, we'll talk about predictions as well. But today we're just talking about uh, tracking. So if you want to know more about him, go to the about of the page we're going to. But today I'm going to click on API, okay? Because all we need as Flow and Power Apps users really is the API documentation. The overview, very helpful. It tells you what this is doing and why. Maybe we misunderstood the title, but this is the right thing. The best thing about this one is no authentication is required. So that's really awesome. We can just use this without having to buy anything, sign up for anything, or we don't need a key. So, hey, this is a really great first API to try out if you're new to using the REST APIs. The rate limiting is also awesome. You're limited to rough, roughly one per second. And I don't know if there's anybody out there that's gonna be doing one per second with Power Apps and Flow, because basically in our app, we're not gonna expect it to update live. We're just gonna ask it to get the information and use it in session, all right? So we'll never go past that limit. But FYI, if you ever want to be sure your app or your flow is not hitting those rate limitations, you will normally get a response of some kind in the headers that lets you know what the rate limitation is. So that depends on the person who developed the API, um, but that's a handy thing to think about. You can actually get those rate limits uh, to find out where you are um, directly from the uh, headers uh, or the inputs of your JSON. And then um, you could leverage those headers and conditions to help you not exceed those rate limitations. Um, then we talk about some of the responses. In this case, this is JSON, which is perfect. We don't need to do any of this visualization in the browser or find any uh, anything for using in the browser. And the reason is because we got Power Apps, and so we're gonna we've got Power Apps and Flow, and so we can visualize this in our Power Platform without needing another tool. Okay, um, this is they do have a feedback mechanism. Although I would suggest you kind of consider it as is because it's been around for a while. And it has endpoints. And this is very important to any REST API because these are the um, HTTP addresses or the URLs um, that you will use to make your, uh, to, 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 to do your methods, right? So whether you're getting or you're um, patching or you're fetching, whatever it is that you're doing in your REST API, uh, you will always need uh, a URL to help you get started. In this one, it has a satellites one, but because it's only one satellite, which is 25544, um, by the way, I'm awfully geeky now that I know this is 25544, I'm feeling like a coder, and I start saying, hey, do you know about satellite 25544? Anyway, so that's the only one you get. So it's the ISS. So we don't need this one, so to speak, because we only have one that we're tracking. What we do need is this one here. Now, I recommend that you go ahead and look down to the bottom of this page. I mean, continue reading this page. If you find something else interesting that you want to do and post on Twitter, I would love to see how you would approach this. You know, like what kind of thing would you make? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and focus on this one, which notice it has at the end the, the key right so that is the id of our satellite so if we're going to ask for information from this rest rest api about iss we have to use the id which is 25544 and then if we do everything the way we're supposed to we'll get back this response and let me tell you i don't need all this but this is what i'm going to need i'm going to need the latitude and the longitude because i'm going to put a map in power ups I want the map to be of what the shuttle will see looking down at Earth, like, you know, well, not the beautiful image of the globe, but the actual city or location where they're looking down at. I'm also going to grab the altitude, like how high is it, the speed, which is this amazing speed that they have that keeps them weightless, and the visibility as to day or night. I really don't need the rest because I can use power ups to put the date and time at the top and stuff like that, okay? So we're gonna actually focus on those five things. 
Okay, so now that we have everything we need, we don't need a key in this case again because they said the authentication, everybody can do it. So this saves us some time. We're gonna go straight into flow and we're gonna create a uh, instant flow, but we're going to not use the flow button. We're gonna use the power ops button and we're gonna call this um, ISS locator. Now, uh, just a little tip here is I'm actually putting ISS in the front. Whenever I do a power ups button, I put the most important part of the flow's goal in the front. And that's because power ups will truncate the file name, the flow name. And so I wanna make sure I see the most important part that helps me recognize this flow. So this is about the ISS. I'm not doing a lot of flows about ISS. So this will make it easy for me to find this flow. And then I'm going to create, and I really hope you like the new interface for creating a new flow. It kind of helps you know what are these different types of, types of flows that we have. All right, so now I'm going to add my HTTP request. I already warned you, this is a premium feature, but it's worth every dime and more. And the method we're going to use is get, because we're basically, we're getting information, all right? So you can see the methods there that are used very often. Usually it's a get or a post, but occasionally you'll do other methods as well. Get meaning give me something, like I'm going to call for something here. There's also a fetch, I believe, that's supported by some APIs um, or in some scenarios. But I'm going to be using get here to get the, these um, details, this response about the satellite. And then the URI here is going to be that endpoint and the endpoint has the ID of the satellite. Now, I will say that many cases, whenever there is an ID or something um, that might be dynamic in the URI, I will sometimes create a variable. This way, if it needs to be updated, I can update it before we get here, and I'll put the variable here. But in this case, we're always going to be doing 25544 because that's the only satellite they're offering, all right? In this case, there's no authorization or anything that, so I don't need to fill in any headers, and it's just one response, so I don't even have to fill out a body. So this is just the most beautiful HTTP request ever. Super simple and easy, all right? Now I'm going to run this and kind of see what it gives us back. Let's test and make sure it gives us back what the site said it was going to give us. So I'll perform the trigger action. There's no prompting here. There's no parameter needed other than the satellite ID. And what it said that we were gonna get back are these things right here. And again, I am primarily looking for those five, the two L's, the A, and the two V's, right? So let's go back to flow. It ran beautifully. If we open up our HTTP action, we'll see that we have a beautiful HTTP status code. You can see that rate limit remaining here. So remember I said it's kind of tracking how many times I can make a call to this. This header could be used in a condition later on um, to determine when my remaining maybe gets below. Maybe we do a do until or something, but we figure we can trap how much, how much uh, close we are getting to our, our limits. But down here on the bottom, more important than all of that gupka, is there is the details that we need. And there is the longitude and the latitude, the two L's, the A, which is altitude, and the two Vs, which is velocity and visibility. And that's basically all I need. So I need to get this back to Power Apps. So I'm gonna look for respond to Power Apps, and you'll see that that action is here, respond to Power Apps at flow. And I'm going to add those things I want. So I had longitude, I had latitude, latitude, I had one A, which was altitude, and then I had the two Vs, which was velocity and visibility. Okay, now when I go and fill this in, notice that my Seymour ain't giving me what I need. This sometimes happens because we're kind of with the dynamic um, content, we're trying to map to what's reasonable. And so this is not coming out the way you expect it to come out over here. That's okay, because all we have to do is parse this 
and then we'll be able to get this. Now I'm gonna show you a trick that I just recently kind of taught myself. Since Sune did a wonderful job, well the whole team did a wonderful job with copy to clipboard, I don't have to like throw this away. I can just copy it to my clipboard and I might do that I like a couple of clicks. I don't know why, sometimes my mouse doesn't do it the first time. So after I get it copied to clipboard, then I'm gonna delete this. And now I'm going to save and test this again. Or I can go back to, and then I hit that, I hit some type of limit and that's fine. So I'm going to go in here because we already had run it before too. So I can just grab this JSON here. And you wanna grab the whole thing, which is everything we want. And I'm going to put a parse JSON right here before the respond. Okay, so, and that's because I was checking to make sure I didn't have anything wrong before I present to you guys. All right, so I'm gonna put the body of the HTTP as the content. And then I still don't see the rest of those tags, right? And there's no see more. There's no see more. There's nothing to see more of, right? But now watch, if I add the payload, which is the JSON that we got as an output, which is all that stuff I said I wanted, and now it creates a schema for me. And this schema that I just created, and it never says float, it says number, I always think it's gonna say float. Um, this schema here, I can now use in that action. So if I hit new step and I go to my clipboard, guess what? Each time that I did a copy, it put that action there. So just to show you that copy and paste doesn't just take the last copy and paste, it'll keep stacking up everything you copy while you're in this session, which is really helpful in many kinds of ways, all right? But I'm just gonna head and take that first one, and you'll see that it has everything that I had in there before. And now I'm gonna drop in longitude, latitude, altitude. You see how I have all my tags now? Don't you love parse JSON? I love it. Did had no clue that I needed parse JSON in my life, right? And now I realize I do. So now this is all the stuff I need for my power up. And sometimes I'll double check my spelling. I'll also double check that I didn't accidentally put the wrong tag in the wrong, in the wrong text spot. Um, and then I'll save this. Now basically I'm done with flow for this part one. We're gonna come back to flow for part two as we get into the notifications. And this is a request limitation just because I, I was testing. And so now I'm gonna close this. I don't need it right now. We're okay. Because remember our limits are around seconds. And so I'm gonna be fine when this power app runs. And so now we're gonna make a new Canvas app. And I probably should make sure that that, that did save. So I'm just gonna do a quick edit. And yes, everything did save. And now I'm making a uh, blank power up. Now, the visibility property, you probably understood longitude, latitude, and velocity, and but the visibility property is kind of important because what it does is it um, tells you whether the, the satellite is in daylight or in um, nighttime. If it's in nighttime, it's harder to see the maps of the Earth because it's nighttime if you set it to satellite, and which I'm going to do. Um, but it's good to recognize what that visibility, it's gonna say daylight or something else, like maybe nighttime or something like that. So keep that in mind because we're gonna do something fun there. And I'm gonna start by adding Bing Maps here. Um, now I do need a key for Bing Maps, but if you just go to Bing slash developer, um, you'll be able to easily get a key um, and it'll tell you what your limitations are and so forth. So you do need the Bing Maps in order to get the map. Now, you could use any map you want, right? And I'm gonna put that map into an image. So I'm just gonna add an image to the page, to the screen, and that map is gonna take up most of the screen. Now I'm also going to set this to fill. Now it, the only reason I want it on fill is because I don't wanna play around with this story here. So it does cut off a little bit when you do this and you might like to not do that and maybe play around with that more to get it to like the majority of it to fit. 
any of that's fine. So now I've got that in there. Notice how nicely Power Apps has made this so much easier to switch from data sources to um, monitor to um, objects to tree view. I mean, it's just, it's really nice how they've optimized this at this point. All right, so now I have my image down here and I have my space up here. Now I'm gonna put another image. So I'm gonna go ahead and name this image image img capital m a p map and i'm going to add one more because i'm going to do something fun i'm going to put a daylight image when it, the visibility is daylight and i'm going to put a nighttime image when it's not and so these are going to be at the top so let's go ahead and add those two images so i'm just going to do view media and i'm actually going to browse to them and just highlight them and you can just go to bing.com and look for uh, royalty free images that you could use for this purpose or you don't have to do this I thought it was just a fun thing I could add so now I have these two images here I also have an image for the icon which again I just went online and looked for something um, that looked like the ISS if you just you go to Bing it has like an image catalog and so you can use the image catalog to locate things that you need. We're gonna call this ISS Tracker App. Uh, find the International Space Station at any time from your mobile device. Okay. And again, you can always add other things to this. This is what I love about making apps. We can now have the tracker next to something else that's about the moon. We could make an app with everything NASA driven that we care about, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna go back. I don't need any special advanced properties. This is one of those simple, simple, simple apps. And basically I'm just gonna focus on making sure that everything is um, lined up. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about some alignment tips that I wanna give you. Um, I'm going to automatically set this image to sunlight. Uh, what, is it, what was it called? Let's see. Sunrise. Okay. We'll just make this a daytime image by default. And I give credit in this case to Jason Peroni, who did the photography here. Um, but you can go out there and you can get non royalty free photos I'm just using this for this exercise I'm not going to sell this app or even encourage anybody else to sell this app it's just an exercise um, okay so now we've got that image at the top this is going to be the map of the earth where the shuttle is so I'm going to name this one up here image visibility because I'm going to if the visibility is daylight I'm going to use this image if the visibility is not daylight then I will use the other one and you know what I'm gonna do? I think I have a lighter one. So take your time and resize your images so that they are not too big. I'm just looking because I think I did a resize and now I can't remember where it is. Right here, I think. So one of these is smaller. So you see that's, that's one meg? This one is less than a meg. So go for the smallest you can when it comes to these images. All right, so now um, it's like my basics. I've got my Bing in there, I've got my two images, I've got one image set to sunrise, and now we need to connect the flow, all right? Now, I'm gonna show you a little trick here. I'm gonna use a button to connect my flow. So I'm just gonna do an action here, and I'm gonna do flows. And then I'm going to pick my ISS locator. Now, these are nice short names, but you can always, that's why I put it on the left so that I could be able to see it even if it was a long name, right? Because sometimes these will get truncated in Power Apps. Okay, so now everything is there. There are no parameters in this, remember? Because we only needed to pass the um, uh, ID of the satellite, which we did. So we're just going to close this. However, I do want to put it in a parameter called ISS response and the reason is because wherever I want to get this data I'm going to use that variable okay now here's the trick I'm going to show you I can copy this 
and put it in the on start of my app so that nobody has to click on the button. All right, when the app loads, it'll run the flow. All right, so I'm gonna delete that button and then I'm gonna actually run the on start. Okay, when I run the on start, it will go, and you can see little ants running at the top, it will go and run the flow. And what I will get back is the data. All right, so let's take a look at that. Let's uh, first do our Bing integration. So let's see if we can find out where this is. For the Bing map, we need, it's called Bing Maps, and I think you need to use the V2, Get Map V2, and you can see up here what it needs. It needs an imagery set, and I think one of them is Arial, which is what I'm gonna use. Yeah, Arial and Arial with labels. Let's do Arial with labels. So there's all different kinds of imagery set. You can go read that on Bing. And then the zoom level is one to 10. I'm gonna make it like a four. And then the latitude is in that variable. What did we say it was? ISS response. And I'm gonna just put a dot and look at all the things that we had sent through our response to Power Apps. So I pay attention up here. You see how it's bolded latitude? Because it wants latitude first. Um, so we can get a little picky about how we pass these parameters. So pay attention to the bolding, right? So let's put the latitude in first. And you remember that in my flow, I double check to make sure that my parameter matched the right token, right? Um, longitude is what it wants next. So I can do IIS response and longitude. And that's all it needs. It'll take more, but I'm just going to stop there. It has some custom properties and you can go check that out in Bing. Okay, so now basically what this should give back to me is where the, oh, I'm sorry, I did that in the image position. Look what I did, guys. You see that? <laughs> it didn't throw me an error, but I could tell because I didn't get any map. So I'm going to delete this and I put the position as full again. It might have to be image position full. Let's see. Yeah, image position dot fulfill. Okay, so now we've got that back. That was a mistake I made, and it's a common mistake to be in the wrong property. Instead of the sample image, I want to put that Bing map story. So now, good, we might be in daylight because <clears throat> we can see very clearly um, the, the location. It looks like it's above Africa right now. All right, cool. The satellite is above Africa, and we know that because we ran a line of, JS of HTTP URL. <laughs> we ran that in Flow, and Flow knows where ISS is. Does that just blow your mind? Go Flow. Okay, so now let's get some other stuff here. So I'm gonna get some label here. So I'm gonna get my first label, and I'm gonna change it. So I'll format one label, kind of get it what I want it to do, and then I'll copy it for everything else. So I might even say auto height on this. And I'm going to use the normal, but you could also use semi-bold. Whole bold for your title. So let's do the title first, all right? So I'm gonna just name this label title. And you notice I was naming over here, and that's just me being old school. It's easier to name from the properties panel. So if you want to get used to doing that, I kind of like got stuck in a rut. So I'm going to do this as the title. So I'm going to make it 24. And then my text is over, also over here. So I don't have to change over here. I can go straight over here and change the title to um, ISS, ISS Tracker App. And over here, when you're working over here, you don't need any quotes. They put it in for you, but you do need to tab away. Notice it hasn't changed. As soon as I hit tab, it will change, right? So just a little thing to note. All right, so now I'm going to copy and paste that just with Control C, Control V. And if your mouse or Control C, Control V isn't working, you can go over here and say copy. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to paste it and right away I'm going to rename it and this is going to be my label longitude. It is a best practice to rename your variables and I'm just going to bring this down to 18 points and normal font, well semi bold, okay, and then move it just a little bit lower. 
and then I'm going to change the text property. Now, don't worry about being precise in your positioning. I'm about to teach you a really quick trick for getting the positioning right without a whole lot of work, all right? So this is going to be my date, and I'm just gonna add now here, so you can see the date and the time. Um, I'm sorry, so let's name this label date. I forgot I wanted to do that. And then we're gonna try copy and paste again. Yes, it worked this time. So I did control C, control V. You can feel when it's got a nice alignment and you can see the dashed lines, but I'm gonna show you something even better. And this time I'm gonna do longitude. Well, I think people think in latitude and then longitude. So I'll do latitude first and then we'll do label latitude. And then instead of now, we're gonna do the response again. ISS response dot latitude. Really super easy, right? And if you want to take this down to less numbers, you could use your next your number formatting. So I could do text, right? And then maybe I just want this to be, um, I forgot what it was, but some format like that if I don't want all those numbers. And apparently, uh, what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. It may not be formatable. So like if that's a number, it may not be. So I'll, I'll talk to you about format numbering later. I have some surprises for you there as well. So I'm gonna leave that as is. I'm gonna Control C, Control V. And under that, I'm gonna put the longitude and same thing here, just longitude, longitude, and then change this to longitude. And again, I do stress these best practices because you'd be surprised how much this helps when you go back to edit your apps or when somebody edits after you, right? And so you can use your search and say, give me all my labels or give me all my images. If you use consistent prefixes, you can find all your buttons that way. So it's really cool if you just name things with a consistent uh, naming protocol, then you can. it's very easy for you to manage it later. Longitude, latitude, so we had the two L's. We had the A, which is altitude, and this will be altitude, and then we have the two V's. So we'll name this altitude. I know some of you are fast forwarding, but I think it's important to stress these best practices. So altitude, and I might give it a capital A up here for consistency, and then copy and paste that. And now I need my two Vs, which is uh, velocity. Sorry, I missed. Uh, and you'll notice I tend to go over to the left because that's how I learned. Um, velocity, and then we'll change this to velocity. All right, and this is, and so you will see everything you actually passed in your response to Power Apps, and so you could have added more. Um, I just wanted these. And then my last V is visibility, which we kind of can hide because the image back here will tell you, right? And I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So, visibility. Okay, so now for this image, I'm going to actually use, you can use a switch case, or I'm gonna use an if, right? So if um, ISS response dot visibility, um equals uh what is it daylight daylight then their image is going to be sunrise otherwise it's going to be sunset uh what have i left out here sunrise ah i don't know how to spell sunset um still don't know okay so now we've got it so that if the visibility of the of the of the satellite is daylight, it's going to show you the sunrise image. Otherwise, it's going to show you the sunset images. Just to remind you what that looks like, I have an image at nighttime. 
But both of these images kind of are heavy on one side or the other, so they don't interfere too much with the text on top of them. Um, and what I've done here is I just want to point out that we have a maximum of 200, and 200 megabytes here. So I make sure I stay well under that. So you can see I did resize these images to make them nice and small for this app. Okay, because you remember this is a browser-based app. Now, because at nighttime the black might be hard to see, I'm going to do another thing with an if statement. So I'm going to highlight all of these, and I just use the control key to do that. And then I'm going to go to the home, and here's where my PowerPoint skills come from. Right, right here on the line, I'm going to choose a line left. And then I'm also going to choose distribute vertically so that they're evenly distributed. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to skew the title just a little bit, all right? So now that I have all those, I'm gonna highlight them. They're all lined up and distributed. Wasn't that fast? That's PowerPoint skill, right? Really easy. So now I'm going to go to the color and I'm gonna use the same formula. So, well, similar color. Um, if visit the uh, I'm sorry ISS response dot visibility equals daylight, then the color will be black. Otherwise, the color will be white, and this will make sure that with the dark image, we'll have white text on top, and it won't be hard to read. All right. So think about things like that. They're very helpful when you're managing how your app looks in different states, all right? In this case, I think I might move this a little bit to the right. So I'm just gonna make the width of these, because they're all the same width. Remember I copy and pasted for that reason. So I'm gonna look for the width here, and I'm gonna make this 450, and then I'm gonna align right. Uh, and then I'm going to take very carefully, wait for those four um, handles there. So if I zoom in here, you'll see that when you're moving, you need to see those four arrows. If you see only two arrows, you're gonna size. But if you see four, you're gonna move, okay? So kind of handy. All right, so this looks the way I want it to look and it's working the way I want it to work. What should we do next? Let's save it and publish it and then our video is all done, right? So we'll publish this and I won't share right now, but I will share this app with all of you uh, after we get done with part two, not right away, right after we get done with part two because part two is gonna change the app slightly. All right, so then I'm gonna close that app and we're gonna run it in the browser. I also enjoy running it on my phone. Um, and so you can see the ants moving right away. Because I put the flow in the on start, the app opens running the flow. So nobody has to hit any button. I really hope you found this interesting. Um, I'm really blown away at what we can do with these Power Platform tools. And I talked a lot in this video, but this takes like five minutes and go out there, find yourself a developer and say, race me, give them the same goal, right? You need to go get that information. Then you need to put it in a, a, an app in some way that you see two pictures and, and one picture says daylight or night. The other picture is the map of the world underneath the shuttle. You say, okay, let's race. And you sit next to that developer and you beat him or her right because we've got these tools that just expedite it and that developer if he's smart or she's smart they'll come try out power apps and flow too because it'll save them time as well so i really hope you enjoyed this um i'll put all the links in the description you don't really need anything except for the link to the rss um to the rest api um and I hope you learned something about REST APIs today. Maybe I took a little fear away and you're ready to go out there and 
find your next REST API to play with in Power Apps and Flow. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I'll be talking to you next week with part two where we'll find out how Flow will notify us when the ISS is above our heads. You guys have a great weekend. Enjoy.